Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're actually going to be doing the last of the Christmas decorations, if you can call it that, just a few lights and some hats, as it's Christmas Eve on day of release, and after that, it's going to be going back to normal style reviews, and then maybe in the new year, we'll see a few little changes. But today, we've got something special to celebrate that, and that's a Canadian whiskey. I'm very, 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 very bad at covering Canadian whiskies mainly because they're just really not available in the UK, the good ones anyway. You know, we've got Standard Crown Royal, which I've done a review of. We've got uh, Standard Canadian Club, which I have not. Uh, and I've managed to cover a couple of special ones. So I'll chuck a, chuck a couple of links up there for you to see if you're interested in my thoughts on those. But I've recently seen a lot of people talking about the Lot 40 and I tried it a couple of times at festivals and I thought it's high time I covered this on the channel. As said, it's Canadian, so this one here unfortunately is in uh, Ontario, and that means I can't scratch off anywhere new, but still good to try something different. And it's called a rye whiskey. Now, there's something interesting about the laws in Canada, and that's that you they can call a whiskey rye, even if it hasn't got any rye in it at all. So you can see some labels with rye whiskey on it that it really isn't rye whiskey. This, however, definitely is. It's 100% rye whiskey. 90% normal rye and 10% malted rye to bring it up to the, the full 100% rye name. The funny thing about it is it's also done in new charred oak so it's going to taste a little bit like the kind of bourbons and American ryes that we that we might have seen before on a channel and on other channels. So it's a couple of things to keep in mind with that you know we're going to be seeing some similar flavours. It's made at the Hiram Walker distillery as I said in Ontario and it's a Perno Ricard owned brand, which is the reason why I can get it in the UK, I suppose. Let's stop messing about and talk about the nose, shall we? Well, wow, straight away, it's a huge, huge nose. If you've any experience with rye whatsoever, it's a very uh, hot, spicy flavor and you're getting bags of this straight off the top of it. And if you're not if you're not used to rye, if you don't know what rye smells like, you really owe it to yourself to try our rye. You know, there's some very cheap, especially like, like Jim Beam rye, similar bourbons that have been made into rye versions. I think Bullet even has a rye. Definitely go and check that out before you try something like this, because this is a little bit more expensive in the UK, maybe 30 to 35 pounds. So it's not breaking the bank, but there are cheaper ryes you can try. Also, you're getting Lots of vanilla, that's from the barrels, I should imagine. If it's made in Canada, I imagine they're getting lots of American oak and things like that. But there's also a lot of sweetness there, it's very strange. Sweet and spicy, but it's not like any kind of rye that I've tried before. And I, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of rye. I've poo-pooed it a little bit on the channel before. I always find it a little bit hot. Um, I think I covered some Rebel Yell way back when, when I started the channel, and I wasn't a big fan of any of them. But this is different, it's got a lot to the nose, there's so much going on there. Let's try on the palette. Mm. All right, but it takes a second or two to come through, but there's lots of rice spice on the, on the tongue. It starts out quite smooth, quite creamy, big wave of spice comes across, and then stuff like the vanillas and things are coming through more of that grassy stuff that's coming through from the nose. It's very herbal, it's not medicinal, it's more like hay grass, that kind of thing. Mm. It's got a huge, huge flavor to it. it. Really does pack a punch. Again, just like the uh, the last video I covered, it was the Jim Beam Signature 12. It's uh, not really a casual sipping whiskey for me anyway. It may well be for you but uh, it's actually really enjoyable rye. Uh, maybe that's my taste changing bit. Uh, I should definitely start exploring more rye, that's for sure. But I'm really enjoying that, and it's something that I wouldn't have bought a bottle of until I tried, because you never know, right? Because I've covered some Canadian whiskies on the channel so far, and they've been a bit subpar, but it, as I've discussed many times, it really does seem that they keep the best stuff to themselves, which is, is great. I love that mentality, but I, I would love it if you guys sent me some good stuff 
and not just me, I mean the whole of the UK, just send us some good stuff so we can put Canadian whiskey firmly on the map in the UK. But for me, I think that's a good whiskey. Oh, we're coming. We're going.